Welcome everybody, my name is Ricardo Vinuesa. Today we're going to continue with a series on uh, reduce order models and using the uh, concepts that we, the, that we learned in the last session on projection and in particular Galerkin projection, we're going to um, look at data-driven decompositions. So we're going to try to see how we can use some of these tools to express spatio-temporal signals into a series of spatial modes uh, multiplied by temporal coefficients such that we can uh, simplify uh, the way that we represent the information and try to learn something about the physics. So let's look at data-driven compositions. So we want to decompose spatial temporal data, okay? This is kind of like the idea. So we want to decompose spatial temporal data into a sum of spatial modes uh, with time varying coefficients, right? So into a sum of spatial modes uh, with time varying uh, coefficients. So let's assume that function y depends on space and time and we can uh, express this function as the sum from j equals 1 to Madrid of uj of x multiplied by aj of t. Okay, So that's basically what we want to do. Uh, now, uh, if, important clarification here, this equal becomes an approximate if m is smaller than nt in general. I mean, there are some nuances to this, but uh, let's assume for now, um, if the number of modes that I retain in my expansion is smaller than the number of snapshots, uh, then this, um, this will not be able to be an equal sign. Right? This, we're basically truncating, as we have um, explained before. Okay, so if we have discrete data, So for discrete data, <laughs> what I have is, and now I'm going to express it in terms of matrices, so I have my data capital Y, which depends on space and time, and this is now uh, approximate, we're going to approximate it with some dimensionality m, okay, so Madrid is smaller than number of, um, number of uh, uh, snapshots in time, so this would be now my matrix u of x, and this is now multiplied by the uh, temporal coefficients which are contained in the matrix a of t. So if now I look at the dimensions of all these guys, what I have is here uh, nx, that's the number of spatial <coughs> points in my mesh. This is now here nt, that's the number of snapshots. Uh, here I have once again nx, that's the spatial dimension. Now we're going to consider the number of uh, snapshots that I'm going to retain in my expansion. So this is basically Madrid, which is here the number of modes, and that's kind of retained here as m, and this would be basically nt. Okay. So this would be the number of snapshots that I have. So I am, uh, again, uh, well, truncating, just retaining m modes, and that will be the way in which we will uh, calculate our spatial uh, dimensionality reduction uh, by retaining Madrid number of um, modes. Okay. So we have this part on uh, how to formulate the problem. What I want to do now is get a bit more insight into this uh, decomposition. So I can calculate POD from the SPD, okay, from the singular value decomposition as usual. So what I have now is that POD <coughs> can be computed from an SPD. From an SVD of a um, data matrix. And remember, we have mentioned this in the channel many times, what you need to do to calculate uh, the SVD of the data matrix is to remove the mean, 
Okay? So we need to subtract the mean, so we look at the fluctuations and potentially scaling. Okay? So the range of the fluctuations uh, does not uh, yield any uh, instabilities when dealing with the resulting matrices. Okay? So uh, of the data matrix, after subtracting the mean, and scaling. Let me write this properly. This will be scaling. Okay. <laughs> so what I will have here is basically my expression y, which is equal to u times sigma times v star. This is as usual. We have talked about this a few times in the channel when uh, expressing the, the SPD. And let's look at the relative sizes of each of these matrices. So this would be of size Norway, this would be of size Madrid, and obviously this is now size Norway times Madrid. Now this has size Norway times Norway, uh, this is again Norway times Madrid, and this is now Madrid times Madrid. Okay, this is the typical way in which we have done the SPD a few times. Now, remember that U and V are unitary matrices. That's always a property that we recall when analyzing uh, these systems with SPD. So we recall, we recall that U and V are unitary matrices. What does it mean? That means that uh, if we uh, multiply them by their transpose, then we get the identity matrix, right? So this means that uh, u star times u is going to be equal to u times u star, and this is the identity of size Norway times Norway. But also, if we do the same with v, v star times v is equal to v times v star, this again gives me the identity matrix in this occasion of size Madrid times Madrid. Okay? So I have these two properties um, that I ca can use. Uh, remember also that sigma, uh, the, the matrix containing the singular values, uh, in the diagonal contains those singular values which are sorted by decreasing order. This is also very important. <laughs> so also, and this is a little recap on SPD, so you remember the basic uh, important information. Also, sigma, is a diagonal matrix with decreasing and not negative entries. Not negative, those are the singular values. Uh, there are matrices with decreasing and non negative entries. <laughs> I also want to add that if we retain the leading POD modes, and those are going to be R, so I take the R leading POD modes, if we retain the leading R POD modes, what I have is my Y, which is going to be approximately and here, remember, I have my typical uh, way to express the sizes of my matrices. Uh, this is approximate. Uh, and then what I will have is this. So I will just retain the first R modes. So this is basically UR. And this is of size Norway times um, R. Okay. Uh, now, in here, I will keep the upper left block, which will be a sigma R and sigma r is of size r times r. And over here, what I have is my uh, matrix of size vr star, which is of size r times m. Okay, so just at the top. I'm just truncating and only retaining uh, the dominant uh, r modes. Uh, this means uh, if we go back to here, the data matrix is Norway times Madrid, that's its size, and these are the columns of UR. This means that we have the R 
leading POD modes. And remember that u r star times u r is going to be equal to the identity matrix of size r times r. Okay, this is kind of going back to the properties that we had before <coughs> about the unitary matrices. U r is still unitary, right? So we still fulfill this property. We still get the identity matrix, just that we get it uh, on a smaller size, right? On a dimension r instead of n. Now, for a system, now let's consider a system. For a system, y dot, which is a function of y, we can discretize as, and then we get y dot, equals to some linear operator a times y. Okay, as we did before for the example of the diffusion equation, here a would be basically a, um, well, the discretized uh, derivative uh, operator. Okay, so a here would be the discretized derivatives. Going back to the diffusion equation, so that we can put things in context with what we saw in the previous video, going back to the diffusion equation, diffusion equation, <coughs> what I have now is partial y partial t times some constant which Again, this is the diffusivity or the conductivity, if we're talking about temperature, uh, partial second y, partial square of x. Okay, so that's a spatial derivative. Remember that ur contains the left uh, singular modes, the r leading uh, left singular um, vectors, actually, the leading POD modes. So uh, this is an important note, uh, ur, which are the first r left, singular vectors, also POD modes, um, maps between the original high dimensional space and the new low dimensional space. Okay, so this is consistent with what we talked about in the previous video. <laughs> now we're going to apply it in a practical example. Okay? So going back to the diffusion equation, remember that the UR matrix contains the left singular vectors, those are the POD modes. We just take the first R, uh, they're sorted by descending order, so these are the ones that contribute the most to the reconstruction of the uh, original signal, and then we can take the covariant equation and discretize. So let's take this and discretize. Here I have y dot. <coughs> this is equal to my linear operator A, which is going to be the conductivity, k times partial second of something divided by x squared. Okay, so this would be my uh, special derivative operator, and this is now multiplied by y. Okay. Now if we remember all the different things that we have here, uh, this is of size nx times nt, this is of size nx times nx, where this is my matrix A, this is of size nx times nt, and now I can simply project. Okay, so we project onto a low dimensional space, okay, and I project with my UR matrix. So I will end up with something like this. A dot is going to be equal to my A hat matrix multiplied by A. Okay, 
this is basically the state in, in the low dimensional space, so the reduced state. So what I have here in practice is R times NT. I also have here R times NT, and this is R times R. Where, if we remember from the previous video, yeah, the application of this example to the diffusion equation, uh, a hat would be equal to UR star times A times UR. And A, which is the low dimensional system, would be UR star times Y. Okay? So this is a, a quick recap of what we talked about in the first introductory video. Now we focus a bit more on how to interpret the SPD and uh, its application to uh, reduce the dimension of the systems. And now we are, we're able to uh, pretty effectively take the diffusion equation and express it in a, a low dimensional space. Okay? So this is an example of the uh, diffusion equation. That's all I have for today. This was uh, one first example. In the next videos, we're going to see applications to progressively more and more complex cases, uh, such that we can have a pretty good overview of how these uh, applications of reduced order models work. For now, that's all I have. Happy to answer your questions and comments, and see you in the next video.